Wobblies. Welcome to Wobbly Otter Outdoors. I'm Chris and in this episode we are designing and making a leather sheath for the Victorinox Ranger Grip 55 Onyx. This isn't a paid promotion. We purchased all these items ourselves. When closed, the Ranger Grip 55 is one and a quarter inches wide and 5.1 inches tall and it's about seven eighths of an inch thick. The first step was to pick out the leather that I wanted to use. I wanted something that was pliable and had a rustic look and feel to it. And I knew I wanted something with a deep brown. When we went to Tandy Leather, they had this box full of large pieces of leather rolled up. It was split leather. And this particular roll cost $30 for the whole thing. Considering this is my first item to make out of leather, it seemed best to err on the less expensive side. So it checked all the boxes and we came home with it. We also got some red waxed thread. I thought that would look nice on the deep brown. I was more interested in making a pouch for the knife than a sheath per se. I wanted something that would be really easy and compact to put in a backpack or some other kind of pack with other gear. And so that's another reason for the pouch look more than a stiff, formal, proper maybe, <laughs> knife sheath. I, I really wanted something more rustic and informal and that I wouldn't worry about using because I want to use it. And cutting out the pieces, if I had to do it again, I would probably use scissors on this split leather because it's not terribly thick and so that would have worked pretty well. The little exacto knife I was using, I think the blade was a little dull and it had trouble cutting through the leather. So I'm looking at different sheaths and pouches that Bill has for his knives and multi-tools and things. I decided to come up with a design that would be as versatile as possible but still keep with the pouch look. That's why it has a dual purpose belt loop on the back, one that can either be worn horizontally or vertically. What is amazing is the edge coat, the edge seal material it is such a blast to use and so functional and sanding in between the coats did seem to give a smoother edge. Sanding the rough edges of the split leather turned out to be probably not necessarily the best thing as far as putting a seal on it because it is the split leather burnishing didn't seem to be as effective. Um, I tried using beeswax to help with that and, and nothing seemed to work.
The tricky part turned out to be punching the holes through four pieces of leather. Pliers worked really well to pull the needle all the way through and made it easy to grip, easier on my fingers and hands. Sewing turned out to be more enjoyable than I thought it was going to be, especially when I did learn to use the awl to open up the holes and make it easier to get the needle through. I did break one needle one time and that's because I was putting a lot of side pressure on it, leverage wise, and that puppy just snapped. Fortunately, we did have another needle, and so that worked good. One thing that was really nice about the red waxed thread that we got is it came with two needles that were perfect. I learned when lacing that using the awl to punch through and make a nice hole 
is wonderful. It makes threading so much easier, the stitching so much easier. And the leather heals itself, as it were. It closes in where you've punched through. So um, I learned not to worry too much about that. Using the sanding method worked great to even up the pieces of leather, um, but not so much for making a seal or a really smooth edge. I'm not sure how important beveling the edges is with the split leather. I did it and it looks nice. Let me know down in the comments what you think regarding the need to bevel split leather. So I'm really interested to know what you all think about the process I followed to make this, about the things I ran into, the choices made, any helpful hints or tips of using split leather versus full grain leather. I would like to do more, I think, with both the split leather as well as full grain leather. I'm thankful that Victorinox didn't have a readily available pouch or cover for the Ranger Grip 55, uh, that gave me an excuse to make one.
Let us know what you think down in the comments below and we'll be doing a review of the Ranger Grip 55 Onyx in a future video. Thanks for watching Wobbly Otter. We love you and hope all your tomorrows are bright. Until next time.